see. <clears throat> yeah, three. I'm sorry, three. <clears throat> I'll begin with verse one. <clears throat> Genesis three, one. It says, now the serpent was more subtile or cunning, sneaky, devious than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now notice the question. He already knew that God told the woman that, but he has already got the woman to where she's about to uh, sing like the temptation, so to speak. She, she's about to spill everything. The woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Uh, otherwise, because if you do, you shall surely die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God doeth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw, now, well, right, so far we, we see that Satan, uh, he started off with a question that he already knew the answer of. Hey, did God say that you should not eat of the tree uh, 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 in the garden? <clears throat> and the woman, yeah, that got the woman uh, to where she hey, we can eat of the trees. But there's only one we can't eat of. Now Satan comes along with a big, fat, bodacious lie. And he says, uh, <clears throat> You won't die. You'll come as gods, knowing good from evil. Because there was no shame with their nakedness. There was no knowledge of right from wrong, good from evil which uh, later down the road is why uh, God handed the commandments to Moses and said, give these to the people, called the law, and the law uh, sh taught us and showed us what is right and what is wrong. Because without uh, the law, we can't be judged for wrongdoing. Right. Now, but the woman said in verse 6, <clears throat> No, and when the woman saw, rather, that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, of course she did. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And she also gave it to her husband, who was with her, it says. And he did eat. And guess what happened? Their eyes were open. They did become as God, small g, of course, because there's only one God. And they, be, uh, they learn good from evil. They, be, uh, they discerned right there and then good from evil. <coughs> And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God 
amongst the trees of the garden. Now understand this, church, no matter what Adam and Eve thought they were doing, they were not hid from God. Yet we need to understand that. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, being Adam, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, he this time being God, who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree wherefore of I commanded thee thou sh that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, oh, Here comes the blame now. Uh, the woman whom you gave us to me uh, uh, to be with me, she gave of me the she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou or you have done. And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat, or deceived me, tricked me. <clears throat> Blame went everywhere except on selves. Now let me stop there for a moment. <clears throat> you and I or anybody else, and I'm sure we have, done things that we ought not do, and don't nobody say, no, I've never done, no, because I don't want to hear that. Uh, <clears throat> and then actually said, you know, that wasn't me, the devil made me do it. Just like everybody, we got, everybody's got somebody to blame, except for sales. But see, the good Lord, he gave us free will. And he also gave us, once he come uh, to uh, this world, died, was buried, rose from the grave, ascended back up into heaven, he gave us something else. And I'm not just talking about the Holy Spirit. He did give us the Holy Spirit, which is the comforter, which he promised that uh, I will not leave you comfortless, he said. I will send unto you the Holy Spirit, and he will teach you my ways. He will not speak of himself, but he will speak whatsoever I tell him. <clears throat> and the Lord did that. But he gave us something else then as well. Uh, what was it, anybody? You know, everybody knows it, guarantee it. But when I pose these questions, we all have a tendency to begin to say, well, my goodness, that's a trick question. Let me see what that was. What was it, anybody? Does the devil have power over me? Uh, God, uh, what's that? No, he don't. So the Lord gave us something else. What was it now? Power over the devil. The, uh, I have the, uh, the devil knows my name, especially now. He knows your name uh, if you are walking with the Lord. If you are a son or a daughter of God, guess what? The Lord, uh, the devil, now knows your name. Now he has st stood up and taken, uh, focused his attention upon you and I, or anyone else that has become a child of God. He didn't give us too much time uh, uh, of his presence or uh, talk to us too much uh, or uh, notice what we was doing uh, a whole lot while we were doing what he wanted us to do because we was already about the devil's work, about the devil's business. And that will also include this, and I'm going to say this because people got a tendency to lift up themselves. I'm a good person. Uh, I don't bother nobody. First of all, I'm a good person. The Lord said, why call me thou good? There is none good but God which is in heaven, or there is none good but God. 
Uh, so we lied right there, and we don't bother nobody. People say they want to justify themselves. Uh, they want to lift up themselves, uh, uh, pat themselves on the back. Uh, I go to mass or I go to uh, services, they say one of the two. Uh, I go to church all the time. I uh, read the Bible from time to time. I don't bother nobody. But see, at the same time, if we have not surrendered our lives and our hearts uh, and open up the door for Jesus Christ and allow him, uh, his spirit to come within us and dwell within us, uh, then we are still about the devil's business. No, I'm not. People will say that they will continue. Oh, no, we're not going to leave off there. I do my own thing. Church, if we're not on God's side, we are on the uh, side of evil. If I do Brother Miller's bidding, then I'm worshiping the devil. I don't care who or what I put before God. If I do my, I'm, I'm uh, following the uh, trap and the snare of the devil uh, just like in the garden of Eden it was a trap it was a snare the uh, he asked him uh, has God told you hey Eve did God tell you that you should not eat of the you shall not eat of the uh, fruit of the tree of uh, uh uh, knowledge of good and evil. He already knew God said that, but he's setting up a trap. He's setting up a snare. And many people fall into that trap. Many people fall into that snare. Uh, we'll come to the altar. We will be sincere uh, about doing what God wants us to do. Many people, many times has come and done exactly that. And as soon as we leave the house of God, uh, brother here comes the devil. And before you know it, uh, we find ourselves uh, feeling condemned about something, uh, uh, feeling that we can't do uh, what God said we can indeed do, uh, feeling that uh, uh, we don't know what we just did. We don't know how we're going to do this. And before you know it, Satan has got our minds so twisted up uh, that that we just leave off with everything uh, with the attitude, hey, who am I kidding? I'm nobody. Uh, God ain't got no time for me. He ain't going to make no time for me. Uh, church, listen. Uh, Jesus came, did he not? And he died in your place. He will indeed make time for you. He indeed already uh, made time for us before we uh, were even thought about coming into the world. Even when Jesus was on that cross, even though it was thousands of years uh, before Brother Millard here was born, and before you guys and uh, ladies and gentlemen were born, uh, Brother, uh, Jesus had you on his mind when he was on the cross. That's where the song says it. I was on his mind. And he and when he prayed unto the Father uh, to ask in God uh, to bless and to keep uh, uh, his disciples, he he uh, went ahead and prayed on your behalf and my behalf. He said, I pray not for these only, God, uh, but for those also uh, that will believe on me uh, through what the uh, your disciples tell them. Uh, so don't tell me, devil, uh, the Lord uh, don't have me on his mind. Don't try to make me believe uh, that God will not make time for me. Uh, that's all he's ever done uh, since he's come down from the uh, uh, from the heavens. And even before he made, he had the time, he made the time, and he still makes that time for you and I. And brother, we don't have to get on a phone and call him up. We don't have to grab a text uh, uh, instrument and text unto the Lord. Uh, we can simply think, uh, brother, 
on and call out from our minds and our hearts unto the Lord uh, without moving one lip. And brother, guess what? Uh, God is right there saying, uh, yes, my child, uh, God loves it when his children uh, want to uh, seek uh, to spend time with them. Uh, church, let me tell you something. I'm going to share with, uh, something with you. And hopefully that it will uh, uh, cause each and every one that hears it uh, uh, to rise up above uh, the ways of the devil and to not fall into his trap. Uh, but sometime uh, when my uh, when I miss church and I'm so I thought I was going to miss again today and I and uh, because my shoulder it was so bad last night I couldn't move anything. Thing. And I was applying everything that we had all together and uh, even the cold ice. And then when it was numb uh, to heat it up. Uh, but it seemed like although the stuff felt good while I, while it was uh, going on, uh, once it was done, uh, the, pa uh, the heat uh, did nothing but get me hot. And I had to move it to go to sleep. Uh, but I woke up this morning and brother look at this. Praise God. I'm thankful to know uh, that God hears the prayers of his people and that God does indeed uh, answer the prayers of his people uh, but sometime uh, from uh, time to time uh, there'll be a little whisper going on. Uh, you know it's most likely time uh, for you to give up uh, uh, the pastoral ship at Waltham and uh, not, uh, not try to do what you've been doing uh, because look at you. Uh, you're getting to where uh, you can't hardly do it. Uh, but church, I'll tell you, uh, when I, when a man wakes up after Satan tries to uh, uh, whisper something like that to him, and church, let me tell you, if I bought into that, if I gave it the time of day, if I just turned around and said, uh, uh, yeah, maybe he is, you know, that's something I should think about. If I had that attitude, uh, would I not eventually uh, fall into the snare uh, that the devil has concocted for me? Uh, would I uh, not eventually uh, fall into a trap uh, that was set by the hand of Satan? Uh, brother, let me tell you, I'll never understand uh, when somebody says, I've retired uh, from preaching, I can retire from pastoring, yes. I can uh, not even will be able to preach anymore. Yes, uh, but to retire, a uh, brother or a man will retire or should think about uh, uh, retiring only uh, when his life is laid down, uh, uh, gone from this earth or when he sees Jesus coming for him. Uh, other than that, the only thing my answer to that question would be is God uh, still on the throne? Absolutely. Well, all right then, I I'm going to keep on and keep it on uh, by the grace of God. I may, there may be a day at church, I don't know uh, that I won't be able uh, to stand up here and preach the word of God the, uh, the way I preach now and the way I have uh, 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 for a, a big portion of my life. Uh, but I'll tell you something, I can always, by the grace of God, I hope I'll be able to sit with somebody and share the gospel of the good news of my Savior about how, uh, how much uh, that Jesus loves them. Uh, but let me tell you something, church, and remind you and I, in Jeremiah, I think it's 29, uh, not for sure, uh, but I think uh, it's chapter 29, somewhere is in there, uh, the Lord reminds me that he knows the plans that he has for you and I. Uh, that is uh, uh, to give us a good life and to give us a blessing, a blessed life, and to keep us and to give us uh, an end, uh, an expected end. Uh, brother, uh, listen here. We don't walk by what we hear, and if we do, uh, we better learn to discern uh, which, uh, which spirit is God, uh, which voice is God, and which spirit and voice is not. 
God of God. Uh, we don't walk by what we see uh, because if we did, uh, brother, I'd have gave up. Not going to lie. Uh, uh, from doing this uh, uh, for a long time ago. Uh, but we walk by faith. Uh, we don't know how to do that. I understand that. Uh, but when we come to know the Lord, uh, believe you me, if we will show Him uh, that we want to draw nigh near unto Him, uh, because He says, uh, draw nigh unto God, and, and I will draw, and He will draw uh, nigh unto you. Uh, but church, we have to be, uh, uh, we can't sit around uh, on the bench, so to speak. We have to get out there, uh, as the boys say on the uh, baseball field, uh, we can't sit around on the bench. We can't hang out in the dugout. We got to get out there and get in the game. Uh, brother, before uh, God will do anything, if I go around uh, not uh, showing God uh, that I don't care if I learn or not, uh, there's an excellent chance I'm not going to learn much at all if I just continue uh, to sit around and, brother, give all of my attention. And we do it sometime, do we not, uh, to the old television. Uh, brother, we all have games we don't want to miss, I'll guarantee it. We all have shows uh, that we just have to get home or uh, uh, to be able to see. Uh, we want to give a lot of time uh, to the TV it seems or a whole lot of time on the computer or a whole lot of time on the old phone and church uh, listen uh, there's nothing wrong with neither one of them in itself uh, but when we put those, those things uh, before the Lord God and his word instead of drawing near unto God uh, we're being drugged and drawing nigh unto of the ways of the world for the most part. Uh, but I'll tell you something. Even though all of these things are good and all good things come from God, all three of those things uh, can keep us uh, in the, uh, the know with, with the information, can it not, uh, that we absolutely uh, should know about. Uh, but it can also, uh, because of the hand of Satan, uh, lead us astray in a minute. I've all from wondered, uh, brother, one of the hardest things, uh, no doubt in my mind, uh, for men, and I'm going to say it, uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to say it, but I'm going to say it in a manner uh, that the ch it won't do anything for uh, against the children, uh, men, uh, no doubt in my uh, uh, no doubt in the world, uh, because I see it everywhere, I hear about it everywhere, and preachers and pastors, uh, brother, they're right there in it. Uh, they don't mean to be, uh, but somehow they just landed up in it. It caught their attention uh, because there was a trap. There was a snare. And what is it? Why, well, brother, is porn, and it's very hard to break if you get into it. No, I'm not into it. I'm just saying uh, there's many people uh, that have fallen into the trap uh, by all three of these items, and they can't seem to get Get loose of the, uh, the small uh, pleasure just for a minute of the flesh uh, seems to be uh, worth everything to them. Uh, brother, what if they got, uh, what if we was there, uh, they was there doing something like that and the Lord came. Uh, brother, let me tell you, uh, the Lord said at the age of 12, uh, did you not know that I must be about my father's business uh, when he was uh, in Jerusalem, uh, his his uh, mom and dad, uh, they came uh, to make the sacrifice and pay, pay taxes and all of this, and then they were going to their way home. And brother, I think they traveled for two days uh, when they found out uh, that Jesus was nowhere in the, in the midst of the company. Uh, so they went all the way back, a uh, two days journey, and brother found him right there in the Lord's house house, and Jesus used the words, uh, wished you not, W-I-S-T, in other words, did you not know I must be about my father's business, a uh, brother, not Joseph's, uh, but God Almighty's. He was in his, uh, his father's house, and he was putting 
to shame of the lawyers and the, uh, the priests of those days. Uh, brother, he was full of knowledge. He was full of wisdom. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, he kept in obedience with his earthly father and his earthly mother, uh, mother and he went back with him. Uh, but church, we must be about our father's business because in the day of uh, that we think not, in the hour of uh, that we think not, uh, brother, the clouds will split open. Uh, the heavens will be rolled back like a scroll. He said, behold, I come as a thief in the night. And he says, what I say unto you, I say unto all. Uh, watch therefore, uh, for you know not of uh, the hour of the coming of the Lord. Uh, brother, it could even be uh, you and I taken out of the world. Uh, that means the Lord has called us. Uh, he didn't kill us. He didn't get rid of us. Uh, brother, he's taken us from the world and given us everlasting life, given us everlasting beauty, uh, given us, surrounding us uh, with everlasting peace. Uh, no worries. Uh, don't have to cry over our loved ones. Don't have to spend time uh, begging out and crying out and pleading with God. Uh, Lord, uh, please uh, bring them into the fold. Uh, brother, my mom, uh, no doubt, because I know uh, what kind of woman she was, uh, even though she went to be with God at the early age of 20, uh, 32, uh, no doubt she called out unto the Lord on the behalf of her children again and again uh, when we were not even aware of it. And now look, I don't know if all of the children are uh, saved or not, uh, but church, I'll tell you, her works did follow her, uh, just like the Bible says in the book of Revelation. And my dad, the same thing. Uh, brother, his works did follow him. And you know, I've heard dad say it uh, a time or two, even if the Lord uh, has to call me home uh, for my children's eyes to be open. He said, uh, the will of God be done. And he said, it won't bother me a bit uh, because I cry over my children. I cry over my grandchildren. I pray, uh, uh, plead with the Lord. You know how my dad uh, fell asleep uh, every night, almost every night anyways. He'd have the Bible speaking to him on the phone, uh, laying there, and he'd go to sleep to it. Uh, brother, I was reading the Bible once uh, when I first uh, turned my life over to the Lord, or no, I was praying, and you know what? I fell asleep uh, while I was praying unto the Lord, and let me tell you something. Uh, the next morning when I woke up, it came to me, what do you think you're doing? Who do you think you are? You fell asleep while talking to God. Uh, brother, and I had that. Lord, I'm sorry, but you know what? It was the devil uh, trying to uh, interrupt. Uh, brother, if I can have that kind of peace, uh, talking to the Lord and fall asleep and have that kind of rest, praise God for it. Uh, brother, I thank God uh, that I have learned by the grace of God and through the power and knowledge of God uh, how to discern uh, right from wrong, how to discern a uh, good from evil. Am I still uh, uh, caught up in snares from time to time? Absolutely. Uh, brother, I'm in, I'm in the flesh, and the flesh is weak, uh, just like the Lord said. Oh, but the Spirit is strong. Uh, when the time is upon me, uh, just like it is at er oh, with everybody, uh, from time to time, uh, to be tempted, I'm reminded uh, that, brother, uh, 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 God has given Give me a way uh, to escape this temptation. And no temptation will come to me uh, that has not come to every other person. Uh, but me being a child of God, uh, brother, I'm reminded uh, that, yeah, the devil, uh, we, I used to see uh, a, 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 a commercial on TV had a little red devil looking thing over here and a little white angel thing looking over here. Uh, the a man had to make up or a woman had to make up their mind. They listened
listen to this and that, uh, but I'll tell you, that's I brought that up uh, because that's the way it seems sometimes, and we have to sit down and think. We have to sit down and go and inquire of God. Yes, church, uh, sometimes uh, that's in our best interest to do that. Uh, all the time, actually, uh, but sometimes we need to just stop uh, before we get overwhelmed. Uh, sometimes we need to stop uh, before our mind begins uh, to run away with us uh, because the devil is on the rampage. Uh, many people think uh, they've got them a good old picture of what the devil looks like. He's got these old point uh, horns on him. He's all red. He's got these evil looking eyes. A big old chin with a little beard right here going on. And he's got evil claws. And he's got him a little tail at the end. Uh, the devil don't look anything like that at all. Uh, but the devil will come in the appearance of an angel of God. Uh, the devil will will come in the appearance of something magnificent. Uh, the devil will come in the appearance of something that is beautiful unto you and I. Uh, many people say uh, because they see I believe. It's in uh, Thessalonians somewhere. First or second. I do not know at this time. Uh, but church, uh, there's going to be uh, the, uh, it's, uh, the man of perdition. Uh, the Antichrist. He He's going to be revealed. Uh, but I'll tell you something, church. Who is it that's being anti-Christ even all the way from the beginning? It's not nobody else uh, but old Lucifer, who I call Lucifer. Yeah, I'm not afraid to mock him. I'm not. He knows, church. I'm not afraid of him. Uh, but I also know of the power that he has should I surrender and uh, give it to him. And I also also know that he can sometimes uh, make things uh, very hard, uh, but at the same time, uh, I don't stand against him all by myself in the flesh of Brother Miller. I uh, Sometimes I literally say this, uh, Brother, I say, Lord, uh, get the door, would you please? Because I know it's Lucifer out there. And let me tell you what, church, believe it or not, that actually helps me sometimes. Sometime, uh, whatever it takes, uh, when the devil comes, uh, uh, and he does on a daily basis, uh, uh, let me feel, uh, let me uh, uh, intrigue you with this. Uh, let me present something to you, and let me share uh, the, uh, some truth with you. Uh, yeah, there's plenty of people that are full of anxiety. Uh, we can't seem to get rid of it. Everything is crowding our mind. We don't know what to do. Uh, church, I'll tell you something. It comes from the devil himself. Uh, there are so people that are so lonely. Uh, they, uh, they're ready to give up their own life. They're ready to take their own life into their hand uh, because uh, nobody cares for me. Uh, because nobody loves me. Uh, brother, these thoughts uh, come from the devil himself. Uh, Jesus told Moses and Moses told Israel. Uh, they were panicking, were they not? They were full of anxiety, no doubt, in my little mind. Uh, were they not? But uh, Moses, a uh, brother, uh, uh, told the church, uh, stand still and see the salvation of God. Uh, when God tells me uh, to go into my closet and shut the door,